OK, so what we have here is we have y equals sine of x plus pi over 6. All right? And what we're going to do for this problem is we need to go ahead and graph it. Now, to do that, um, what I'm going to do is first determine my important information, the amplitude, the period, the x scale, the vertical transformation, and the phase shift. Okay. You have to be able to find all of this information. If you can find all of this information, graphing is not as difficult as you want it to always be. All right? But we have to find this information first. The amplitude, ladies and gentlemen, remember, is just the absolute value of A. So you might say, well, what is the absolute value of A again? So we go back to our transformation form of this function. Right? If we're going to have transformations to the parent graph, it's going to come from one of these values, A, B, C, or D. So the amplitude is the absolute value of A. So I look at this graph and I say, all right, is anything being multiplied by my sign? No. So my amplitude is 1. Next, I looked at the period. Period, remember, is 2 pi divided by B. Well, B is what's being multiplied by my x, which in this case is 1. So that's 2 pi. The next thing I do is determine the x scale. So I look at my x scale, and remember, x scale is 2 pi over b, which is your period, divided by 4. Well, 2 pi over b was just 2 pi. Divided by 4 is going to be pi halves. My vertical transformation, that's just going to be my value of d. Well, I'm not adding or subtracting outside my function, so that's just going to equal none. I'm not going to be shifting my graph up or down at all. And then I have my phase shift. Now, remember the phase shift, we always take whatever's inside of our function, and we set it equal to 0. Then we solve for x. So therefore, you guys can see that x equals negative pi over 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift my graph pi over 6 to the left. This is also going to be where we're going to want to start what the graph is going to look like. That's where we're going to be starting everything. All right, so let's go back and talk about the parent graph. When I was showing you guys, and hopefully you guys know from my teaching so far, when I'm showing you guys the parent graph, the main important thing that I'm interested in is you guys understanding what the parent graph looks like. Here is the parent graph of sine with, with no transformations. Okay, With no transformations, here's what the graph looks like. Now, we know that this graph continues indefinitely to the left and indefinitely to the right. But here's three important points, and here's a couple other important points. And what we found out, there's four important points. We have the intercept, when the period ends, the minimum, and the maximum. All right, That's why we divided by 4. However, we're now shifting this graph pi over 6 to the left. So when I, I want to graph this, Forget about the y-axis. Don't worry about the y-axis right now. Let's just say, here's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start at where this graph is shifted. Think about taking this graph and shifting it pi over 6 to the left. So the graph's going to kind of look something like that. So I'm just going to say, you know what? I'm going to make this negative pi over 6. That's where my graph is going to start. It used to start at 0. Now it's going to start at negative pi over 6. Then I look at this and I say, all right, I'm now going to add my x scale. What that means is between each one of my tick marks is going to be pi halves. Right? And what do each one of these scales represent? They either represent the maximum, the minimum, or another x-intercept on my graph. So if I have negative pi over 6, I need to add pi halves to get to my next point. Right, my next scale. Well, then you have to find the common denominator, da 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 da, da. and it's, it's sometimes it get kind of confusing. So instead of using pi over pi halves, why can't we use three pi over six? Makes it a little bit easier, right? Because then at least they have the same denominators. So now what I'm going to do is add three pi over six. Three pi over six, ladies and gentlemen, is the same thing as pi over pi halves. Well, now negative pi, negative pi plus 3 pi 
is now going to be 2 pi over 6. Add 3 pi again, 5 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We can also go in the negative direction. Because you need to provide two periods. So in the negative direction, it's going to be negative 4 pi over 6, negative 7 pi over 6, negative 10 pi over 6, and negative 13 pi over 6. Does everybody see how I'm just adding my x scale? The x scale tells you the distance between each scale. And remember, we're starting right here. That's our start. Now, um, it's going to be better for you guys to now reduce this. All right? 10 pi over 6 guys, you can reduce that to negative 5 pi over 3. Here would be negative 2 pi over 3, pi over 3. 4 pi over 3, right? So you guys should notice that when you guys get a test or anything like this, notice that you're going to want to reduce those um, down. All right, so anyways, now let's go and look at what this graph's going to look like. And the next thing is we can do is determine where exactly 0. We know we're starting here, but where's my y-axis? Remember, y-axis is when x equals 0. So I have this nice, lovely y-axis right there. Sine used to start there. But now it's starting here, but the y-axis is still there. That's roughly 0, I'm estimating. Okay. Now we look at our amplitude. Our amplitude is only going to be, oops, I erased that. Our amplitude is 1. That means my graph is only going to go as high as 1 and as low as negative 1. So now, how do we graph this? Well, noticing what the sign looks like, you guys remember the parent graph. Huh? The graph always looks like that. That's why it's so important to know what the graph is going to look like. So I have my starting point. The next x scale is the maximum. So I go to the next x scale, and I say as high as 1. The next x scale is an x-intercept. The next x scale is my minimum value. The next x scale is my x-intercept. So that's one period. Now I go in the negative direction. Okay, and there you go. That's two periods for a sign. Okay. Now, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, that's all going to change.